Hey everyone, Eric on paper, and guess what? I'm Eric. So I love giant monsters and I love superheroes and I thought I'm gonna combine the two. So here we go. Uh, Ultraman, uh, the Guinness World Record holder for most spin-offs in a series. I'm gonna break down some of the hour techniques that I do and uh, hope you enjoy it. Because Ultraman is kaiju-sized, I decided to do a drawing of us looking up at him from a low angle and I chose his classic pose where he had just transformed. I'm keeping the pencils nice and loose at this stage so I can go in and uh, check references later when I am refining the pose. I will be moving and adjusting the arms later, but when you're at this stage of the drawing, it's more important to get the feeling right of what you want to express in the character. Then when looking at your reference points, um, one of the things I noticed about Ultraman and most tokusatsu heroes is that they don't have the same overly developed muscular build of the way American superheroes are drawn. So I'm trying to keep that kind of thin athletic frame that Ultraman has. And then I'm going in and making adjustments to the arm uh, after looking at some reference, and I had to rework the arms quite a bit to actually get it right and ended up taking a photo of myself just to make sure that uh, everything was correct. And I took the curve out of the arm and made it much straighter, and it gives him a lot more of a heroic look. And deciding to give some additional elements to the... Uh, Drawing, I added in the Science Patrol building, where uh, Hayata, the human form of Ultraman, uh, works, and the uh, VTOL, another aircraft that the Science Patrol use. And getting perspective on this building was extremely difficult, but it was worth the effort. I just went in roughly with a light sketch where I wanted the building, and then we'll find it later with the roller. It's important when drawing a figure the size of a skyscraper to give the viewer reference so they can guess actually how big he or she is. Without the reference, one could even get the idea that they're just looking at a very low angle of a normal sized person, which when we're dealing with kaiju is definitely not the feeling that we want. So now going into the coloring stage, I decided to bypass the usual inking and line art stage because I wanted this to have more of a uh, painterly feeling. And what I'm doing first is doing all the grays in the image, and I decided to build it up from dark to light instead of working from light to dark because I knew I wanted the light to be coming in from the left of the image. And it's also the reason why I penciled lightly. You have to erase as you go. Otherwise, the alcohol in these Copic markers uh, traps the lead inside the, uh, inside the ink and makes it virtually impossible to erase. Now, you can get away with not erasing when you're using very dark colors. For example, the grays I'm using on Ultraman here, I am using the Cool Gray series, and I've even going as far as using the C10, which is about as dark as I can find. And the pencil doesn't show up through there, but as soon as you start getting into the C6 area, you'll begin to notice. The other thing to keep in mind, too, is uh, the texture of the character. And Ultraman has a very metallic texture. Um, of course, his original suit was made of latex, but that's not the feeling that the artist creating him wanted. So I'm going more with the artistic intent of the character. And now I absolutely love blending in the reds with Copic markers. They are very rich colors. Uh, so what I'm doing here is trying to make the reds match the rest of the shadow, erasing as I go. And I would recommend using a kneaded rubber eraser. It doesn't tear up the page or damage it. You can just dab and... It works really well, especially when you're using kind of a medium soft lead. Okay, now when I'm building up uh, the shadows here, just making sure that it matches the gray. And one blending tip I have found, if you're working from dark to light, is to go with your darkest color and then your medium color next to it, working in circles or putting lines out there that allow the alcohol of the markers to catch on. 
and then using your lightest color as a blending medium and letting them all mix and mingle together. Now I had to do something new with the Science Patrol building, which is using a ruler with Copic markers. I wasn't sure exactly how it was going to go, but it worked out pretty well. Now, one of the things I realized I had a problem with is I wanted to have neutral grays for the buildings in the background, but at the time of this recording, I was running really low on my ink for the neutral grays and I didn't have a refill. So what I had to do was use cool grays in combination with neutral grays, and it gave the building a really uh, interesting texture that was different. In looking at the photo reference of the Science Patrol building, it had this kind of greenish uh, base to it. So I just went in with a marker approximation as close as I could get to the photograph and added some stippling with a gray marker just to try to get the texture and match the feeling. And overall, just with the color story of this image, it's very, uh, uh, very heavily relying on a variety of grays, and it really helps the red and the character pop. Now we're coming to a more difficult part of the image, which is trying to get the little details of the Science Patrol roof right. And if you can use not the Copic sketch markers with a broader tip, uh, but the more standardized Copic markers uh, that come to a very, very uh, sharp point, that would be ideal. But if you are having to use the sketch markers, then I would recommend uh, just being very careful. Now, I know that the uh, flames and shooting out of the jets of the Science Patrol VTOL and other things in the series were actually white or bluish white, but considering that I wanted to have a blue sky in the background, I thought that the orange red would provide a nicer contrast. And like the building, these ships were very difficult to do. So I decided to give it a bit more of an impressionistic approach and speed it along. Uh, suggesting motion. Now with the sky, I just found the closest blue marker that resembled the backdrops that Tsuburaya would use in his Ultraman episodes and just went around and lightly put in areas in the space between the clouds to suggest the sky. And here is the completed image. I had a lot of fun working on this piece and I'm probably going to be doing more in addition to my Spider-Man 4 work and updates so if kaiju uh, superhero tokusatsu is your thing uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these so please like and subscribe and thank you for watching and keep telling your stories.